That's extortion, man. <laughs> Hi, guys. Good morning. So, today is an exciting day. We're already at our doctor's office from the title. Yeah. We're excited because today we're going to meet our baby. Okay, we're not going to meet, but we're going to see our baby Himoha, baby R or baby M. Mm-hmm. <laughs> R for girl and M for boy mm. yeah so yeah we want to go uh in to um this is a gynecologist actually so okay. it's my first appointment i'm eight weeks pregnant today yeah. not this belly this belly <laughs> <laughs> yeah wrong belly guys yeah. come on hey 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 hey, hey. Oh, i hear y'all in the comments y'all cut that out yeah yeah i'm not pregnant so it's just a food baby it's a burrito so we are eight weeks pregnant i actually got an appointment four weeks like four weeks uh late because i called them last month but there wasn't any openings until today but no worries no worries so we're already here at the office let's go in and we'll take you guys with us as we get to you know see what it is it's gonna be a new experience for me in terms of like you know pregnancy you know care antenatal and all those things because i had my key and all that done while in kenya the Nairobi Hospital, the best hospital in Kenya. Yeah, so now this is a new experience and I can't really wait to see how it's going to be or, you know, what's what what's like. So, come and let's go. Are you ready? Yes. You excited? Yes. You hoping for a girl or boy? Girl. <laughs> he's team boy. He's team girl. I'm team boy. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I should have worn pink today. I should have worn pink. But then you have blue. See, you're representing blue without knowing. <laughs> Just a minute. Guys, I needed time to process all that. I want to share this journey with you guys. I told you we're exploring America together. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is part of the bad and the ugly. So as I share this journey with you guys, one thing I want to say is I hate the healthcare system in America. I said it. I said it. I said it on live. I'm not missing my words. I said it. I just hate it. Maybe because of everything we have been told or we have been made to believe by the media, I came here with so many expectations, maybe. And then I'm, you know, disappointed because I had two, two, I had very high expectations, but I simply hate the healthcare system here in America. And I'm speaking as someone who, in Kenya, I had I had money to go to a private hospital. So really, most of the time, I wasn't going to a public hospital. So I'm comparing the healthcare system in Kenya, the private healthcare system in Kenya, and the healthcare system in America. And that's where my comparison is. But let me delve into what happened. So we were excited. Um, I found out I was pregnant uh, a few months ago. And I didn't know so much about what I need to do, how to get a doctor or a gynecologist, because you need to work this journey with professionals, right? So I found out I was pregnant in... I'm going to be exact to the time. I found out I was pregnant in July 26th, 2024. And when I found out, we were excited because we've been trying for some months. And we started the whole process of getting someone to walk this journey with me. Uh, again, a gynecologist, because that's what I was told I need. And that process was crazy. That process was draining now if you've experienced better healthcare system in america and you live in a different state or then comment down below and let me know so that i'm also not you know giving a blanket statement for america and maybe the other people who are enjoying the healthcare system um here july 26 uh, of course i took time and then like 
Two days after, I started looking for a gynecologist. But before you do that, you have to go through your insurance. Because if you dare get a gynecologist or any service provider, healthcare service provider, who is not in network with your insurance, you will cry for the bills that are going to come after your, your procedure or your care. So I called the insurance and yeah, they were kind enough to, to provide me with a list of the in-house providers, um, in-network providers, and I started calling them. And the only way I could make a decision is through stars on Google, like reviews and stuff like that. You know, and just basically going with my instincts. So eventually, after a long, you know, search, I found three people that I ended up calling. And based on the reception that I was getting, that's how I decided to choose who would be my provider. When I started calling them, that's where the shock came in. There's one I called, and she said she was not taking new patients. She's full to capacity. She's not taking new, ta- new patients. I'm in Texas. So I called the other one. The other one, the only open slot she had was two months from that day that I'd called. July, August, September. Yes, so that would have been August and September. So she was only available in October. Mind you, I found out I'm pregnant in June, July. No one else can attend to you. Like, if you're pregnant, you need to you need to see a gynecologist. You know, even when I called, because I called parent uh plant parenthood and i was like hey i'm pregnant and i just want to you know have that first visit so i can have my anxiety down this was going to be a rainbow baby this 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 is a rainbow baby so i've lost a baby before this one last year when i was in kenya i lost a baby or i lost a pregnancy carrying a rainbow pregnancy comes with a lot of anxiety so when i found out i really wanted to just get on with someone or a professional right away i called plant parenthood and I was telling them, hey, I'm pregnant and I would like to, you know, have that first visit so they can check if everything is fine, get a pregnancy test done to confirm the pregnancy and everything. And they told me, no, we don't do that. You have to go to, you have to look for a gynecologist. So I was like, okay. So I continued the process of looking for a gynecologist. And the next one that I called, she only had an availability a month from the day I was calling. I was only able to get an appointment on September 10th, 2024. Found out I'm pregnant, July 26th. So that's the first frustration. When you're in Kenya and you want you want to see a doctor to even just confirm a pregnancy test, you just walk to any hospital and you get the service done. You don't even need to call or book an appointment. They just do it. And I felt I felt frustrated because of that. I'm like, why do I have to wait? I'm, I'm carrying a rainbow baby. I'm already anxious. Why do I have to wait again for a month, two months, just so I can go get checked and, you know, they tell me everything is fine. You get what I mean? But anyway, September 10th, we go for appointment. We were so excited. Remember at this point, I'd already been pregnant for like nine weeks pregnant. So we go into the doctor. We go through my history and everything. And it's time to go to the ultrasound. When he went to the ultrasound, I was excited. Like, I was really excited. The ultrasound lady starts, you know, doing her thing. It had to be done transvaginal. Um, that's the best way to, you know, do it when they are, when the pregnancy is that small. So the, she did a transvaginal thing, and she was looking and looking. And we started noticing, noticing, we started noticing that she's a bit uncomfortable, you know, and... She was asking me, have you been feeling any pain, any cramping? Have you been bleeding? I told her, no, I've been perfect. I mean, I've, I've been having pregnancy symptoms. That's all. But let me pause to say that this pregnancy was so different. But I wasn't alarmed because I hear pregnancies are different. This pregnancy was so different. Like, I didn't have severe pregnancy symptoms like i had with mikey with mikey immediately i found out i was like at, at, i think i was five weeks six weeks pregnant and i had i had all these crazy cramps it was so painful i had nausea i had fatigue like i was feeling sick for sure and it kept in, it kept getting worse not worse worse but the symptoms kept increasing you know like if i was feeling nauseous today 
tomorrow I wake up, I'm extremely nauseous, you know, and it will get, keep getting more and more. So with this pregnancy, I was, I was a nauseous, yes, but it wasn't terrible. Like, it wasn't terrible. And I didn't have any cramping like I had with Mikey. The only thing I was experiencing so much with this pregnancy was fatigue. I was extremely tired all the time. So when she asked me if I was bleeding and everything, I said no. So anyway, she's like, okay. So she continues doing her thing. And hmm, she plays the heartbeat thing. Like after she's tried to do her thing, measurements and everything, she plays the heartbeat thing. You know, there's a way they, they play the heartbeat and, you know, the heartbeat will just count. And I saw it was flat. Um, and I looked at her and she was still trying. She tried again. And, you know, she's really trying to be professional, but I can already sense danger or I can already sense there's something that's not right. She she was like, okay, um, I'm done. Um, I'm just going to send the results to, to the doctor and she'll call you and discuss the results with you. The doctor comes in and she's like, um, sweetie, she actually called me sweetie. <laughs> she said, uh, sweetie, it seems like we don't have a heartbeat and according to your missed period you're nine weeks pregnant but the ultrasound is reading six weeks pregnant but the baby is measuring six weeks and then the other thing she also said the yolk 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 sac it's called the yolk sac and that's what she called it the yolk sac is bigger is abnormally bigger than what what a yolk sac should should be at that stage of pregnancy and when she said there's no heartbeat like literally my heart just dropped and i was like so does that mean like the baby is dead if there's no heartbeat and i was asking her are you likely or is it guarantee or is it a must that you can hear uh the heartbeat at this stage of my pregnancy and she said sometimes you can hear, sometimes you can't hear. So we really don't want to conclude anything based on that. But what's raising our eyebrows even more is the yolk sac being abnormally big. When that happens, it usually is a sign that there's something that's not right. At this point, honestly, I didn't understand what she means. Like everything sounded like Chinese, like Mandarin to me. And... I was just looking at my husband. I was like, do you have any questions? You know, my husband didn't have any. Like, we were all confused. Like, we were all shocked. And it felt like we walked into that clinic like an inflated balloon. And then someone just pierced their needle, our needle, into that balloon. So I asked her, um, so now... What's the way forward? You know, we don't have a heartbeat. The yolk sac is abnormally big. What's the way forward? And she says, I want to study the HCG levels, your HCG levels, and see. Because that's, that's going to give me better clues. So we're going to monitor the HCG levels. And if they're dropping, then we can discuss and know what to do after that. But if they're increasing, we can also discuss and know what to do. And so I was asking her, in this scenario, what would be a good outcome? If the HCG levels are increasing, is that a good sign? Or if they're dropping, is that a bad sign? And she was like, yeah, we ideally want HCG levels to increase with pregnancy growth. So if they are dropping, it's also not going to be a good sign. But I have, I had a positive pregnancy test. So I asked her, because I did my test at home and, you know, that's like a month, over a month ago. And two of them came back positive. You have done the test yourself. Is there a positive? Am I getting a positive pregnancy test? And she's like, yeah, you're getting a positive pregnancy test. And there's even a yolk sac. And there's even products of conception in your uterus. Like, you're pregnant. Uh, it's just that, you know, the baby has no heartbeat. And ideally, they should have a heartbeat. And then the yolk sac is abnormally big than it should be. It was big, guys. It was big. Like, a normal, at that week, at, at, that, at that stage of pregnancy, the yolk should be around 
three, four, uh, five. I think it's a mem. Oh, I can't remember what 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 measurements they're using, but mine was eleven. Eleven. Wow, that's so big. So I even had to go and Google because I was asking her which is which is the normal size. Uh, you know, uh, and she told me, and I was like, okay, let me also confirm on with Google. You know, we always like to confirm what the doctor said with Google, right? With Doctor Google. <laughs> but what is encouraging me is when I check on Google, it said that people who had abnormally big yolk sac and they still went ahead to have a healthy pregnancy. And the doctor has also said that the heartbeat is really not there. Sometimes you cannot hear it. Sometimes you can hear it. So really, she's not basing everything on not hearing the heartbeat. So I was a bit optimistic you know with that so anyway i was asking the doctor so she said yeah she needs to monitor the hcg levels so we can see if they're dropping or they're increasing so she she sent me to the lab to get my blood drawn and uh, she asked me to come in two days after so we can measure that and then just like compare and she sent us home and i was like you know as christians when you're tempted like that the it's it's the, the only thing that you want to do is just pray and i remember i just came home i was really broken honestly i was so broken because this is a rainbow baby so i was already anxious that i'm carrying a rainbow baby you know carrying rainbow babies comes with so much anxiety of what if i lose it again the way i lost the first one but then you try to keep yourself you know positive and everything so when I got home, I was like, God, I've already lost one. Like, just just do a miracle. I didn't even go to work, you know, during that period. Because I was like, I'm so disoriented. My job is in customer service. I'm supposed to be smiling. I'm supposed to be serving people with all the excitement in the world. But deep down inside, I'm dying. Deep down inside, there's just things that are going on that, you know, I wish one going on. So I was like, I know I'm not in the best state to, you know, serve people. So those two days of waiting to know the HCG levels were crucial. And so the only thing we had was to wait and see how the two HCG levels compare so that we can determine what is happening or the doctor can determine what's happening with this pregnancy and if we're losing it or it's going to survive and all that. Yeah. 